what's going on everybody welcome back to another video today i want to really sit down and talk to you about my philosophy around frugal living this has been a long time coming because i've made several videos on this channel all about frugal living from frugal living for beginners frugal living habits the mindset of it i talked a lot about frugal living but what i found is that most people do frugal living for their own reasons and as my own financial situation continued to change over the years like my content around frugal living started to change i no longer felt that it was relatable to do stuff like penny pinch and save just to save and to really live as minimally as possible so what i'm saying is me and you our reasons for living frugally might be totally different and that's perfectly okay Despite what stage you are in your financial journey, this video is going to give you some insight and value. So the first thing I want to say about my frugal living philosophy is my philosophy now is don't wait till you get into a financial bind to start living frugally. And the mindset behind this approach is be proactive, not reactive. And I think I came in with this exact approach when I first started living on my own. I saw the people around me wait until they get into massive debt to say, OK, we're not going to McDonald's today. You know what I'm saying? Or someone would receive a pay cut or they wouldn't receive a raise and their rent still went up or their mortgage still went up. So they still had to pay those bills. So as a result, they had to live frugally. And the biggest thing I wanna to give to you guys is when it comes to anything financially, it's best to be on the proactive side of things. You're not always gonna know what's gonna come up, but it's best to always be as proactive as possible. So literally my day of graduation from college, which was two weeks before I actually started my first full-time job, I was already thinking ahead of, okay, how can I save on this? But that wasn't without first making a few financial mistakes. So the first one was moving into my townhouse without having enough for the security deposit. So luckily my uncle helped me out. Shout out to Uncle Brandon. And the second one, I say this all the time, but I wanna keep saying it so you can really see the power behind this type of mistake. And that was choosing to live in a townhouse instead of a single bedroom apartment, even though I'm a single guy, no kids, no wife, no none of that. And I still felt it necessary to have two bedrooms and two and a half bathrooms. <laughs> still to this day, it's beyond me why I wanted to do that. Anyway, about three months into my job when I started to actually get worried about my career and maybe I chose the wrong path to go to because I didn't feel like I was very good at what I was doing. It didn't come naturally to me and I felt like I was making a good salary, but I felt like at any moment it could have just went to zero because of getting let go or laid off or something because I was that much on edge about my job when I first moved out. And only then did I start to live frugally. So before that, I really wasn't living that frugally. Like sure, I, I might have lived more frugally than most people my age at that time, but by my standards, I don't think I lived that frugally at that time. But you see what I'm saying though? You see how even though I started off frugally, I kind of had to wait until I was feeling some pressure to actually start living frugally. You get what I mean? Like I recommend that you don't wait until you get to that point. Instead, what I recommend is that you start off on the right foot by living below your means. And what I mean by that is two specific things. So for one, I mean living on a lot less than what I'm making. And two, when it comes to the rest of that money, is pretending like it doesn't even exist. And by that I mean I'm not using it for anything external like food or rent or gas or anything like that. So for example, I make income on this YouTube channel and most of the time that money just sits in my separate bank account that I have specifically for my YouTube earnings and other business earnings and it just sits there and accumulates the whole time. That's all I need it to do right now. And so I pretend like it doesn't exist. I'm not using it to order food from Uber Eats. I'm not using it to go eat out. I'm not using it for clothes or anything like that. Technology, nothing. But once that money hits a certain number, I do something with that money and I'll tell you exactly what that is in just a minute here. But just know it's something productive that I do with that money. And the same thing goes for my website. Anything I might earn from my website, whether it's coaching calls or a product that I might be selling on my website, it's gonna be the same exact concept. Same thing for Patreon earnings. Which, by the way, I need some more Patreon followers. Go ahead and follow your boy on Patreon. Another example is my job. So I've been working there for about three and a half years now. And the first two years, I was working in a leadership position. And then, boom, I got a nice promotion. Very happy about it. Very proud because, you know, I'm very happy and proud about that promotion because not only is it more money, but it's the same exact work-life balance I had before. So I can still continue to create these videos for you guys and do all the other entrepreneurial things that I'm doing on the side, which we'll get into in just a second. But anyway, I live off my old salary 
and the excess that I make from my new salary, you know what I'm saying, it doesn't exist to me. That money gets sent off somewhere else. So hopefully as you're starting to see, I live frugally not to save face, not to build a savings per se, even though this is a really good way to do that if you want to do that, which is why this video is valuable for anyone wanting to live a frugal lifestyle, but I'm living frugally for a proactive reason, to build wealth. I'm thinking 20, 30 years into the future. You get what I'm saying? But I'm also thinking five, 10 years into the future because I know the things that I'm doing right now are gonna have a very valuable and powerful impact in the future. Not just for me, for my family too. Which leads me to the next part of my frugal living philosophy. Living frugally doesn't mean that you don't spend money. It doesn't mean that you have to pinch every single penny that you have, that you never do anything you enjoy that you ever like or anything like that. And your reasons are gonna differ from mine once again, but, but one of my favorite things to spend money on are, are investments within myself. And I'm not talking about the stock market. I'm talking about truly investing in myself. So I'll give you a few examples. So something I really like to do in my free time is read books. I really, really like to read books. Not only do they make me smarter, make my vocabulary bigger, but it's also entertaining and I can gain knowledge and apply that within my own life. And then once I see that it works, I can give that advice to other people. So it's a win-win. It's nothing but value for the price of maybe between $10 and $30. And if it's on Audible, it's just $15 a month. You get what I mean? So there's nothing wrong with living frugally and then still investing in yourself. You can absolutely do that. That's just what my favorite thing to do is. For you, you might have a different favorite thing to spend your money on. But frugal living doesn't mean that you're on like a bare bones type of budget. It just means that you're being sparingly with your money, that you understand how to conserve it and that you have a plan with it. That's all it means to me. And that, that's kind of why I created an entire series about changing the definition of frugal living. And that was when I first had my epiphany that I think of frugal living a lot differently than what most people think of frugal living as. And I think if more people adopted this type of mindset, not that I have all the answers, but I think if more people adapted this type of mindset, they would be more proactive with their finances in general. Anyway, got a little off topic, I'm getting right back in there. But besides books, other things I like to do to invest in myself, like it, it could be anything when you're investing in yourself. So for example, gym membership, that's investing in yourself because you're investing in a gym. So now you go into the gym, you work out, you do your cardio, you do your lifts. If you're into aerobics and anaerobics, it, we have all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Gyms have saunas. Some gyms have swimming pools, basketball courts. You can have fun and get physically active and be healthy. Regulate that blood pressure. You know what I'm saying? And it also decreases stress and I don't know, maybe I'm just weird, but the gym legitimately makes me happy. Like, I really am happy when I'm up in there. I'm smiling, doing pull-ups, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I really do have a good time when I do it. And check this out. Also, skincare. I told y'all in my morning routine video that I made a few weeks ago that you have to care about your skin, even if you're a guy. See, the women already done figured this one out, but for the guys, I have something very special for you. So for the past few years, I've just been buying like very generic store-bought type of brands when it came to my skincare. And they would like dry my skin out, and it wasn't like perfect at all. It really wasn't ideal, and I didn't like the way half of them smelled. And so I came across this brand called Tiege Hanley. And starting like the middle of last year, I started buying their product and I loved it. And anyway, their product was super dope. So I started actually investing in them. And it was like 40 something dollars a month, which was well within my budget of investing in myself, right? But what's crazy is they just found your boy on IG and reached out to me. Like I didn't even reach out to them, but this is legit my favorite skincare brand ever is, is specifically for men. But long story short, they made me part of their affiliate program. So I just want to show you real quick what it does. It's a very simple yet extremely effective product. So first is just the wash. It's just the soap that you wash your face with, you know what I'm saying? It's super smooth, clears everything out, clears all the dirt out of your skin. It's super awesome, super smooth. You get that like uh, squeaky clean feeling afterwards, you know what I mean? And I usually put the wash on when I'm in the shower because I don't like getting water all over myself because for some reason I haven't mastered how to wash my face without getting water all over my shirt. But that's a story for another day. And then you have the AM or the PM lotion which the AM actually has sunblock in it, so when you go outside, you're not susceptible to all the dangerous ultraviolet rays of the sun. You get what I'm saying? And the PM, you just put on before you go to sleep at night. And then there is a bonus, there's a scrub, and this is just in the edition that I got, but there's a scrub that you apply two times a week, but you basically just exfoliate your skin twice a week, and then you're done. 
Anyways, that was a super long story, but the link is in the description if you want to try it. And you get to use my special code and get yourself a nice little discount. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. That's linking frugal living with investing in yourself. Other things I've invested into myself with is like courses, especially when it came to learning. That was stuff that I really invested in myself in. Because I just feel like the more knowledge you have and the more knowledge that you're actually able to apply in a real world type of setting that has a real use case that can add real value is only going to add value to your life in the future. So I've invested in courses and I've invested in a coach and both of those paid off extreme dividends. So for courses, I bought stuff like I bought several YouTube courses. I ain't going to lie to you because this is a crazy platform to kind of wrap your head around. But once you get it, like it's just really fun and seamless. But, you know, people make it seem like YouTube is easy on camera. Like if they're natural on camera or they have like a really successful channel, it might look like it's easy, but there's really a lot of planning that goes behind it. There's a lot of, you know, trial and error. There's a lot of learning curves. Like I had to learn how to edit videos, how to position my camera right. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of stuff you have to actually learn with YouTube. You have to learn the sound quality, how to adjust your audio, how to get the color correction right, how to properly upload videos up to YouTube, how to put music in the background, little stuff that you may not think about. And as a result of those courses, I know a lot about YouTube and I'm able to apply those things and keep and I can continuously improve my channel. But one of my favorite courses of all time, though, is this meditation course I bought from alux.com. That course is fire. And it's helped a lot with my emotional intelligence, my patience, and also being like completely aware of how I'm feeling and how I'm thinking. Like that is just, people really sleep on how important that really is. And I also invested in myself by hiring a coach and she was awesome. Her name is Camille Colazzo. She's also here on YouTube, makes frugal living videos and other type of money content. And recently she's been putting like more lifestyle content out, which is super dope. So you can check her out. But I saw her channel and I was immediately impressed. And I, she had a coaching program. I reached out immediately and it was on from there. And here's where my philosophy differs. I'm not a frugal living type of person who's afraid to spend money, but I'm very intentional about how I spend my money. If I wanna spend $500 this month on investing in myself or a thousand or 1700, it doesn't matter. If it's in my budget to spend that money to invest in myself, that's what I'm going to intentionally spend my money on. But I'm going to have an exact goal. It's, I'm going to know exactly what I'm going to invest in. Am I investing in a coach? Am I investing in a course? Am I investing in a more state-of-the-art gym? You know what I mean? And, okay, this is my goal. Maybe I might invest in a personal trainer this month. Not that I feel like I need one at the gym, but you get what I'm saying? That's just an example. But these things have prices. So if you know how much they're going to cost and you know what your goal is and you know what the value is behind it in the the long run i'm gonna go for it every single time but it's in my budget to do so and that's the difference like just because you're living brutally doesn't mean you're gonna penny pinch everything and just keep everything to yourself nah i think with a different perspective because the one thing i can say about this is every time i invest in myself it comes back in the form of me making more money in the long run me doing this YouTube channel for so long has drastically improved my ability to talk and speak in front of a large audience and inspire people and give correct messages in such a way that people actually understand and they see the vision that I see. As a leader, that is extremely important. I'm not saying that's the only reason for my promotion, but it definitely has something to do with it. So anyway, that's the second thing, investing in myself, not being afraid to spend money. But I wouldn't be honest with you if I told you that was where I spend the bulk of my money every single month, because that's not the truth at all. The truth is this, that's just my favorite place to spend my money at, but here's where most of my money actually goes. That money that I said that didn't exist earlier, it definitely exists. I just treat it like it doesn't exist because the thing is, when most people make more money, when most people get a promotion or a raise at work, what do they say? Oh, now I can buy this. I don't do that crap. I'm sorry, I just, I don't. Because then my net worth isn't gonna change. And if I'm making more money, I need to be thankful and grateful for making that extra money. And the way to pay it forward and to show that gratitude is to actually do something productive with it, in my humble opinion. My philosophy is as simple as this. Spend that extra money that doesn't exist on priorities, goals, and aspirations. In that exact order. And I guess goals and aspirations kind of goes hand in hand, but you get what I'm saying. So priorities would be stuff like if you feel like your savings isn't on point, like where it should be. Like, I feel like I want to add a few thousand more to my savings. Okay, cool. So my new goal is going to be, okay, for the next few months, I'm going to throw some extra money into my savings till I get to my goal. 
That's a priority. Or if you're in debt, especially credit card debt, okay, I need to get this $2,000 paid off real quick, boom, boom. Okay, now I can focus on all my other financial goals. That's what I'm talking about. So that's a priority because if you don't get those two squared away and something bad happens, you might be in a bind where you can't even use the excess money for anything else. And that's what I'm saying. You don't want to live a frugal life just for the sake of living a frugal life. Just because now you're in a financial situation. Now I have to live frugally and be miserable. So now you're double miserable because now you're in a financial situation and now you have to be disciplined and you're using discipline that you didn't have before when you were in a better financial situation. You get what I'm saying? Does that, does that make sense to you? Because it doesn't make that much sense to me. And I get why it happens. It's because we learn a lot of lessons too late. But this channel serves as a platform to actually show you what mistakes look like, how to recover from them, and how to prevent them in general. And then once you get your priorities out of the way, or if you want to pay, or if you want to spend money on your priorities and your goals and aspirations at the same time, you can do that too. And for me, one of my biggest goals and aspirations within my financial life is to create generational wealth. And I'm telling you right now, majority of my wealth is in the stock market. And when that thing shoots back up, because I make very good investments, I'm telling you right now, when that thing shoots back up, I'm going to be looking super, super, super nice. On my Patreon, I have a video about investing. That's why I think y'all should join your boy's Patreon. But I think something that really does get slept on in the frugal lifestyle is actually investing. Like, if you really think about it, you're living frugally so you can have more money, right? So you can have more money at your disposal, so you can have it saved, so you can have that cushion. But what about the generations after you? Because even if you have, let's say you have $80,000 in your savings account. And let's say you make an average of $70,000 a year. So that's just a little over a year in earnings for you. So what I'm saying is that's not going to do anything for your family in the future. And I'm not saying put your whole life savings into the stock market. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you should accumulate money into the stock market until eventually it hits that number. And just think about it. You can put $10,000 in a stock that's at the right price. And when it shoots up, it can be at like that $10,000 can be turned into $50,000. So that's the $40,000 profit. You get what I mean? So anyway, I got to chill. I don't want to talk too much about investing on this channel because y'all don't seem to like my investing videos. But I'm going to put it in this video because the whole point of frugal living is literally the future. That's an aspiration because, you know, as you have families and generations, generations after you and things like that, and you have a stock market portfolio that's in the millions, and you're able to then educate and pass it on and on and on and on, who's to say it can't turn into billions? And it's not about necessarily being rich. It's about having that legacy and that generational footprint. You get what I'm saying? That you're able to lead with. You know, I would rather lead with that than lead generations to just holding on to money as much as they can because money is scarce. I don't want them to have the idea that money is scarce and that it's hard to get and that not everyone has it and that not everyone has a fair chance of getting it. I want them to have the idea that I have to be grateful for the money that I do have and I have to treat it in the right way. And based on me treating it the right way by doing stuff like investing in myself and my education for what, you know, in terms of what I can afford and make myself more valuable to the marketplace and then make more money. And then when you do that, pretend like it doesn't exist, you're being responsible with your money. So then you're showing that you're a good steward of that money. You get what I'm saying? I'm getting deep here. I'm getting deep. And it's just, I don't know, it's something about how things just work. It's like, once you're good with that money and, you know, you don't have no debt because, you you know, you, you laid it all out. Like, when it came to your priorities, you knocked that debt out. When it came to your priorities, you, you increased your savings. When it came to your priorities, you made sure you weren't behind on any bills. And so, as a result, the other money that doesn't exist now goes towards your goals and aspirations little by little. And that's how you have the wealth accumulation. Rule living is a very good habit to have. I just don't want you guys doing it for what I consider to be the wrong reasons because what I see most people doing frugal living for is basically survival mode. But the thing is, your financial situation is going to change. So even if you are living frugally because you're in survival mode and you're just trying to you know, stay afloat, that is perfectly fine. I'm just saying once you get out of that, it's time to think for the future so you never have to worry about that ever again. And then don't even just think about your future. Think about your family's future. And I'm going to tell you this before I turn this camera off. Something that a big aspiration of mine has always been was to write a book. I've been saying this since I was like a freshman in college, but I never knew what the book would be about. And I recently wrote a book and I told you guys 
at the end of last year that I was gonna write a book towards the end of this year. Well, guess what? Literally the first three months of this year, that's what I was doing. I was writing that book. Like I spent several hours a day, whether I was working or whether I was off, I didn't really care. Like I was up, I was losing sleep, but I just had a passion, like a really burning desire to write the book. And so the reason I say that it's an aspiration, it did, it definitely cost them money to write. Like sure it was free to write the book on my laptop and stuff, but like I had to pay for the book cover and that book cover is cold. That book cover is super, super cold. I'm super proud of that book cover. But also, um, I edited the book myself several times over, paid for an editor. So like stuff like that, that's what I'm saying. Technically, you could say that's investing in yourself, but that's also investing in your aspirations because it easily costed over a thousand dollars, you know, to perfect and make this into a fine product for you guys. So I don't want to just give you guys any old thing. Like, I'm, nah, there's quality in every piece of this book. You're gonna love it. It's coming out soon. Um, I plan on having it out on my birthday, you know what I'm saying? So right now I'm just fine tuning everything and getting everything ready. So it's gonna be ready in about a month and a half. And if anything changes, I will definitely let you know. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed making it. Frugal living is one of my favorite topics, but I just found that as I kept creating frugal living videos and watching my financial situation change, I had to change, you know, the content around it because it wouldn't be true for me to say, yeah, I'm just penny pension. Yeah, I'm just saving. Like, no, I'm investing. No, I'm investing in myself and in the stock market. And I'm thinking about the future. And I think you should do the same. No matter where you're at, think about these types of things. But anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and his channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.